Mike McNamara, and today I'd like to show you the exciting new Nikon D800 HDSLR. This is a 36.3 megapixel full frame pro camera that sells for under $3,000, which is amazing because that means the price per megapixel has dropped from over $20,000 per megapixel in 1990 to just under $100 per megapixel with this model. So, without further ado, let's see what's inside the box of the new D800 camera. Okay, inside this box, we don't have the manuals and the warranty card, but what we do have is a View NX2 software that ships with the camera, and this is a basic image editing software along with NEF raw file conversion software. It also allows you to do a few things with movies like, you know, trim them. And there's other functions inside here that help. But let's see what's inside underneath the first insert. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to open up and get right to the heart of it here, the camera. The D800 is a magnesium alloy body, full weather sealed and protected pro body. And as you can see, it's a beautiful camera. It only weighs a little over 2 pounds, 2.3, 2 pounds, 3 ounces, somewhere in that vicinity, without a lens. And it's got your normal Nikon look and feel. It has plenty of buttons on it. We'll get to those in a minute. And let's see what else is in the box first. Well, that's all that's right there. The rest of it comes in this box. And this is battery charger for the EN EL15 battery, which gives you up to 900 shots on a full charge, and that's uh, SEPA numbers using the pop-up flash half the time. Got a nice uh, Nikon camera strap. Uh, this is the USB 3.0 super speed cable, and the power cord for the box, and the EN EL15 battery. So, again, this gives you a 900 shot capacity. There's a optional battery grip that allows you to get up to about 1,400 cam uh, shots on the SIFO rating front. Now, let's take a closer look at the camera. On the back, you'll see a 3.2 inch, 921,000 dot screen with a 170 degree viewing angle. And you also see all of the other buttons. If you're a Nikon shooter, this should look pretty familiar to you. The menu button on the side, um, along with several other function buttons, the OK switch. And here's a live button that allows you to switch between camera live and video live. And when you're in video live, you take a still photo, it's going to be a 16 by 9 ratio. And it's a slightly smaller uh, megapixel count. Now on top, there's a quality control button, white balance, ISO, and a bracketing button. And right along the side here, a uh, knurled knob here that allows you to switch through your, your burst speeds. Continuous low, continuous high, and all the way over to mirror up functions. Now, taking a look at the front, we'll open this up here. You can take a look inside there, there's the full size mirror, and next to that are the depth of field preview buttons, the switches for uh, manual and, and, and automatic focus. Now as you look around the camera, you'll notice on the side, oh, the rubber door opens up and gives you access to the super speed USB 3 connector and a mini HDMI connector, as well as an input for a stereo microphone. It has a built-in mono microphone on it, but it has a stereo input which is really required these days. Also, a uh, great studio feature here is your PC sync cord connector, and also a 10-pin electronic connector that allows you to hook this to GPS units. Close those over. Again, tightly sealed in rubber. On this side, we've got dual card slots, one for a CF card and the other one for SD, SDHC, SDXC. And the CF card is completely compatible with the high-speed UDMA cards. So, on top is a pop-up flash that allows you to control external flashes, just like most of the other Nikons in its class and before it. Allows you to use the commander mode to control SB flash units external. And a, a beautiful pentaprism 100% coverage uh, viewfinder, optical viewfinder. Now Nikon is also selling another version of this camera. It's called the D800E. Hey, and it just so happens that I have one of those too, but it wasn't in the box. As you can see, they're pretty similar, because the real big differences between these cameras is the D800E is missing part of the optical low-pass filter inside. It allows you to get a couple more lines of resolution and, and sharpness out of the camera, 
And I'll take a look at that too in the upcoming review I'm planning. But for now, this is what you get inside the D800 box and probably the D800E box. Everything I said, again, between these two cameras, they're identical except for that optical low-pass filter. And this one will cost you $300 more. The D800E actually costs more than the D800. So if you'd like more information on these cameras, click on the icon to my left. And thanks for watching.